What up African world, it's Home Team here and welcome back to another video of African history, culture, and worldview. Also, welcome back to my video series, A Closer Look. Today, we're going to be taking a closer look at the Nguni peoples and their influence on American pop culture. By supporting this channel on Patreon, you're helping in the creation of these videos and contributing to this content. On Patreon, you can find more in-depth courses on African history. And with a word from my sponsors, there's a new social media platform dedicated to educating and uplifting our people. No longer do we have to be censored for speaking our truth. OBT Social is black owned and operated and a place where you can post your businesses and even monetize your content. You can visit the website at obtsocial.com. Links to everything in the description box below. As with all my Closer Look videos, I try my best to pronounce names or titles that the people use themselves. So please bear with me if you notice any mispronunciations. Also, with videos like these, textbook knowledge on any particular ethnic group will have errors. At times, the scholarship has assumptions that don't reflect a proper historical perspective. So, if you are from this African ethnic group, I would really appreciate any additional insight, correction, or revised context so that we can truly understand these African people as best we can. I thought I would speak on the larger Nguni people group as a whole because their collective cultures have been featured in the highest places of American pop culture. Most of my Closer Look videos feature one African ethnic group, but you'll notice that most groups descend from a larger parent cluster that contains many branches, and thus the ethnic groups we'll be discussing today share the same Nguni origin. The most prominent of these groups include the Zulu, Hoza, Ndebele, and Swazi peoples. There are many other Nguni groups, but these are largely considered the most popular and most influential. The Nguni are considered a Bantu-speaking peoples who have historically occupied areas of southeastern Africa. In total, this group is believed to number around 31 million people. The Nguni peoples have an ancient presence in southern Africa and have most certainly impacted southern African history in a memorable way. This is why their various cultures have influenced other regions, even crossing the Atlantic Ocean. Historians believe that the ancestors of contemporary Nguni were the first Bantu speakers to arrive in southeastern Africa sometime after the 2nd century CE. Linguists point to the use of cliques in Nguni languages as evidence of not only the antiquity of the migration but also of the early migrants' likely assimilation of Kozan speakers whose languages use similar phonemes. No other Bantu languages use cliques. Toward the end of the 18th century, the various Nguni peoples organized themselves into three main kingdoms. The Nguni, along with other African ethnic cluster groups, organized themselves in settlements that reflected the importance of cattle as a means of wealth, communication with the ancestors, and establishing kinship ties with others. One of the most significant events in Nguni history was the so-called Mfakane, an event that displaced many Nguni people and initiated a great migration, if you will. Some would consider the Zulu as the most militarily powerful Nguni group, and with the rise of Shaka Zulu, they made their military prowess internationally known. In the 1820s, the cattle herding Zulu, led by their king Shaka, embarked on an aggressive campaign of conquest and expansion known as the Enfikane. Shaka's large and well-armed armies conquered a number of neighboring peoples and sent others fleeing. Some Nguni groups adopted the Zulu's methods of warfare and used them to subjugate the peoples in whose territory they ultimately settled. The Ndebele of Zimbabwe are one such group. The Soshangane of Mozambique are another. The Swazi Kingdom was also established during this period. This event, along with others, put the Zulu on the map, in a sense. But what made the Zulu very popular around the globe was no doubt their victory against the British in a fight known as the Battle of Islanwana. This Zulu victory single-handedly convinced the British they had to take them very seriously. 
The Nguni people in general after the 19th century became more known due to their extensive history and encounters with Europeans. One of the ways in which Nguni culture influenced the Western world was in the hip-hop music industry. A popular group known as the Zulu Nation no doubt took inspiration from the Zulu branch of the Nguni peoples. For many Afro-descendant men in the Western world, the Zulu represented one of the highest forms of masculinity and pride. One of the most popular female artists in America is Beyonce, and in her collection of visual music videos entitled Black is King, she took inspiration from one of the Nguni peoples. The video accompanying the track Keys to the Kingdom centers on the wedding between Simba and Nala from The Lion King and depicts the tradition of house painting as practiced by the Indebele people of South Africa. The colorful geometric designs usually on the sides of houses or walls are traditionally done by women. Also, a monumental event in popular culture especially amongst Afro-descendant people was the film Black Panther. It featured a range of African influences, many of which originated amongst the various Nguni cultures. The gold rings worn around the necks of the Dora Milaje come from the Ndebele tribe of South Africa, known as Nzilla. Only married Ndebele women may wear the rings, even though they've become something of a fashion trend in South Africa recently. Angela Bassett as Queen Mother Ramonda makes an entrance with a large disc headdress. In most of her scenes, she wears a smaller version of the hat, which Carter borrowed from Zulu culture. The Isikolo is a hat worn by married women and was traditionally shaped from grass fronds with cotton woven through. Their sizes and colors differ between clans, at times reaching a meter in diameter. For Nguni culture to reach some of the highest cultural expressions in American history is profound and is testament to not only their tremendous influence, but their well-developed culture and history. With the inclusion of Nguni culture in these spaces, I can only imagine that other Western cultural genres will follow suit. Well, I'm all out, guys. If you like these videos and want to help in this continued production, consider supporting the home team on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace.